So I used to think AI was just the latest hype that would soon blow over, but now I use it as my personal assistant every single day. AI attends my meetings and creates to-do lists for me, sends me a morning briefing on industry developments relevant to my work, and even helps me eat healthier. At the end of the video, I'll share why and how I changed my mind about AI, but first I'll tell you about the three levels of using AI productivity tools and why you might be stuck at level one. Because if you are, you're missing out on 90% of what AI can do for you. Level one AI productivity is this. I'm in Apple Notes looking up some thoughts I jotted down about the results of a survey I ran. I highlight some text, click writing tools, and ask it to summarize the results. Boom instant key points. Level one is also this. I recorded a voice note after my most recent visit to the dentist. Apple Notes transcribed my voice note, and now with one tap, I can get a concise summary that I can quickly refer back to before my next appointment. And level one is this. I ask Google a question, and instead of reading through 10 articles, Gemini reads the top search results for me and gives me the answer. So level one AI productivity tools help you write, summarize, search the web, and so on. These tools are great, but using them is only scratching the surface. If you stop here, it's like going on the internet in the 2000s, but never using Wikipedia. At minimum, you should be using level two AI productivity tools. Here's one tool I discovered that immediately became part of my workflow. So this tool joins my meetings and takes notes from me, whether I attend the meeting myself or not, by the way. It listens and watches any shared screens, and after the meeting, it produces a detailed summary including key decisions and action items, which it also saves to Google Docs for easy reference. And that's not all. It can even connect to task management apps like ClickUp and automatically turn those action items into to-dos in your task manager and assign them to the right people if you're working with the team. What a glimpse of our productivity future. If you missed the meeting, you don't have to waste time re-watching the entire recording. Instead, you can just scan the summary in seconds and get back to work. And if you did attend the meeting, you have an easy summary to refer back to. This tool is called Fireflies, by the way. I'd link to this tool and to all the other tools I'll mention in the video description. Here's another example of level two AI productivity assistance. Every morning, I get a personalized briefing covering the latest news about productivity tools, updates on Apple software and hardware, and news on my favorite NFL team, the Philadelphia Eagles. Hey, these tools aren't just for work. For example, this morning, my briefing told me Apple is probably launching a new iPhone today. And a few weeks ago, it told me about the new Chinese DeepSeek AI model, which runs more efficiently than similar models like ChatGPT's. And the other day, my morning briefing told me the Eagles won the Super Bowl. But of course, I knew about that one already. So this personal daily briefing replaces hours of tracking down news on social media, which inevitably results in doom scrolling. Is my morning briefing perfect? No, sometimes it tells me the same thing several days in a row, but AI assistants keep improving and I bet that sooner rather than later, we're all gonna get personal morning briefings, but we can set your morning briefing up right now. First question, what should be in it? Should it check your competitors' websites every day and report back on anything that's new? Should it track policy changes that could affect your business or notify you about new AI tools that could save you hours every week? Here's how to set up your daily briefing on ChatGPT. Just start a new conversation, but make sure you choose the ChatGPT model that supports scheduled tasks. Then just ask ChatGPT to send you a daily briefing. Tell it what you want it to include in your briefing, such as work updates, competitor tracking, or stock market trends, and tell it what time of day you'd like to receive the briefing. Then try it out for a few days, let it run a few times, see what works and what needs improvement. It probably won't be perfect right away, so you can refine the prompt over time. And here's a tip, use ChatGPT to improve the prompt for ChatGPT. So just open a normal new chat to do that and say you've got a daily briefing going on and tell it how the daily briefing isn't exactly the way you'd like it to be yet. Maybe your briefing includes news on topics you don't care about. So you just ask ChatGPT to improve the prompt for you. Then you head over to your task summary and you paste in the improved prompt. For this sort of thing, by the way, I like to just speak to ChatGPT verbally. So I just open the conversation on my phone, tap the microphone icon, and that way I can record a voice message and ChatGPT will transcribe it very accurately. When I do this, it feels like I'm just talking to a friend or to a colleague and I find it a lot less tedious than typing everything up. When I type, I tend to get impatient. So often I don't give enough context and then ChatGPT's replies are less 
useful. Level two AI productivity tools are great for getting insights out of data too. For instance, I offer productivity courses to get you organized and make you more productive. Sometimes these are live programs that run for some number of weeks, but more often they're just self-paced courses with videos, workbooks, and so on. Anyway, when someone finishes one of my courses, I ask them to fill out a feedback survey. But as more people go through my courses, I'm finding it harder to read everyone's feedback immediately. So instead of reading through hundreds of responses manually, I use AI to pick out the key themes and the AI highlights the fantastic results that people get and also identifies what they find most valuable so I can offer more of that and flags any recurring questions that maybe I need to address. So this saves me a bunch of time, but also helps me to be more responsive to people's feedback and that allows me to improve my courses faster. Let me give you one more example of the level two AI productivity tools. The other day I had a very specific question, the kind of thing that normally I'd spend half an hour figuring out, Googling, reading Reddit threads, reading documentation on company websites. But instead I did this. I went to an AI search engine and asked my question, how can I play the game Hitman on my Mac? I own the game on Steam, but it only gives me access to part of the game. I feel like I should be able to play the rest of the game through a cloud gaming service. How would that work? The AI search engine then read 51 sources and summarized the answer for me, citing its results. And the answer was 100% correct, but that's not even all. It mentioned a thing called Moonlight. So I was like, what's that? And it, it explained that to me in the context of my previous question. I then asked more follow-up questions and every time it answered them perfectly, even anticipating things I might wanna know that I hadn't asked yet. This tool is called Perplexity. And if you haven't tried it yet, you must. It's amazing for those highly specific questions you might have where it's important that you get correct answers, answers that you can verify by checking the source yourself if need be. So let's zoom out. Level one AI productivity tools are table stakes. It's the writing assistance and the search result summaries. But to keep up with the game, you should also be using level two AI productivity tools like Fireflies, ChatGPT tasks, and Perplexity. They can automate tedious tasks for you, but the real magic happens on level three. Here's what that looks like. The other day I was feeling jittery after my mid-morning coffee. I asked ChatGPT what might be going on, and it said I was probably consuming too many, quote, naked carbs. To keep my blood sugar level more stable, it suggested some modifications to my breakfast, and it also recommended that I swap out the milk I put in my cappuccino. From a past conversation, ChatGPT remembered that I'm vegan, so it proposed a bunch of plant-based milk. I could try in my coffee. And yesterday I made my cappuccino with its top recommendation, a pea-based milk. Guess what? No sugar spike. So at level three, AI isn't just automating tasks and it isn't just strictly about productivity either. At this level, these AI assistants are thinking with you. Here's another example. I've been using ChatGPT's deep research feature to make better YouTube videos. I asked it to find out which kind of productivity videos people find the most useful and to tell me how I can change the style of my own videos to make them more engaging, more interesting and more helpful for you because I respect your time. And the deep research it did actually gave me quite a few actionable insights that I wouldn't have thought of on my own. I realize you're probably not a YouTuber though. So let's say you work in marketing for a chain of gyms. You could use deep research to analyze the most successful promotions that work in your industry. You could ask it to identify the types of Instagram posts, say, that tend to go viral and bring in new gym members. And you can have it summarize the results of this research in a one-page strategy memo for you to share with your team with footnotes to the data sources it used. This kind of deep research assistance doesn't mean you won't have to think for yourself, but it can save you lots of time and give you great ideas. And that's such a crucial point. If you've tried out tools like ChatGPT and you've been underwhelmed, it might be because those tools don't know enough about you so they can't be as useful. For example, ChatGPT can't tell you how to eat healthier without knowing what you normally eat, what you like to eat even, and what you're allergic to. So the more information you feed these AI tools, the more helpful they can be. And I don't want you to dismiss the power of ChatGPT or other AI assistants just because you've only played around with them for half an hour. In the same way, AI productivity tools don't always have easy access to your data yet. And that also limits how much you can get out of them. For example, I tried to get ChatGPT to automatically analyze my latest course feedback survey responses just once a week, for example. And this almost worked, ChatGPT set up a weekly task. It formatted the results nicely, listing praise as well as constructive feedback. It also sent me a notification right on time every week, except it asked me to manually upload the spreadsheet with survey responses every time. And that defeated the purpose. But this situation is getting better. And in fact, I know many of you are Apple fans, as am I. And if you are, you might've been quite excited when Apple announced Apple Intelligence. 
It's coming along slowly, and so far it's mostly stuck at level one. Apple Intelligence will help you rewrite an email to be more formal. It will transcribe voice notes. It will highlight your most urgent notifications and so on. But if Apple Intelligence lives up to its promise, it'll be so much more than that. It will have access to information like your email, your documents, your notes. It will know what your manager recently asked you to do. It will know what is on your to-do list and so on. And that will make it a truly useful personal assistant. You'll be able to talk to your phone or your computer and just say, hey, pull up that report I've been working on. Let's add a section towards the end about how the changes in the market will affect which kinds of products we should offer. And that's a fairly complicated example. Even simpler stuff is gonna be awesome. Like, hey, what is the name of that client I was emailing back and forth with last week? Or was there anything urgent in the emails I received this weekend? Or maybe, hey, find that note I wrote the other day about maybe collaborating with that bakery. Hopefully the required integrations between AI assistants and your data will be coming soon. But even now, tools like ChatGPT are already incredibly helpful as personal assistants. In fact, I talk things through with ChatGPT daily, such as when I asked it about getting off the blood sugar roller coaster. Try this out for yourself. Open ChatGPT or whichever AI assistant you prefer to use and just tell it about yourself. If you use ChatGPT, just head over to your profile, then settings, then personalization, and give it some custom instructions. ChatGPT also has a very useful memory feature that will remember things you tell it across conversations. And it will use those memories to give you answers that are tailored to your unique situation. This way, you get more out of ChatGPT the more you use it. I was also really excited the other day that Google Gemini is going even further. Not just having a memory with saved tidbits, but also looking through past conversations, entire past conversations, when that is helpful. Seriously, these AI assistants are improving on a month-to-month -month basis, and you really want to keep up with them. Anyway, after you tell it about yourself, ask your AI assistant of choice how it can help you. This is such a handy trick because with AI productivity tools, our imagination is often the limiting factor. So let these assistants imagine for you. For example, I asked ChatGPT what its new tasks feature could do for me. It knows that I've had some shoulder pain for a while. So it suggested it could periodically check in with me on my shoulder health. And based on what I tell it about how my shoulder is feeling, suggest changes to my rehab exercises. It's absolutely incredible. When I talk about sharing my health data with an AI assistant, you might worry about the privacy implications of AI knowing so much about you. I totally get that. And while these tools will often be more helpful the more they know about you, there are ways you can protect your privacy. Again, using ChatGPT as an example, you can go into your settings and turn off, improve the model for everyone. So your conversations won't be used in model training. And you can open a so-called temporary conversation too that won't show in your chat history or use or create memories. That's kind of like an incognito window in your browser. And what about another concern? about AI assistants, their tendency to hallucinate sometimes. Even ChatGPT's deep research, as smart as it is, can sometimes, quote, hallucinate facts in responses or make incorrect inferences. <laughs> And it may, quote, struggle with distinguishing authoritative information from rumors. This is a challenge for sure, but you can use AI responsibly. Just double check critical information and you'll still save hours and hours using these AI assistants in your work. Also, it's not like humans always give you 100% reliable information either. Let me share with you the biggest mistake that I made about productivity AI. So two years ago, I met Jerome, who is now a close friend. And in our first conversation, he kept going on and on about how excited he was about developments in AI. He'd clearly been racking his brain about how to integrate AI into his business. And as we talked, I kept thinking, this guy is just looking for a nail to hit with his AI hammer. Also around that time, others in the productivity space were raving about every new AI powered app. I rolled my eyes, this is just hype, it'll blow over. Oops, today I am the one telling my friend Jerome about every new thing that ChatGPT can do. I'm the one emailing the people subscribed to my productivity newsletter, please don't sleep on AI productivity tools. I went from being pretty damn skeptical about AI tools to being a big enthusiast, and I just don't want you to make the same mistake that I did. If you're stuck at using level one AI productivity tools, it's time to level up. Don't miss this boat. Mastering AI productivity tools is like learning to use the internet in the 90s. Get ahead now and you'll reap the benefits for years. Ignore these tools and you're gonna be playing catch up. At the very least, use level two tools to automate some of those tedious tasks that you surely have. But if you really wanna get ahead, set aside time to master these tools, not just once, but on an ongoing basis as part of your professional development for some extra motivation and inspiration. Sign up to my productivity newsletter 
where I'll tell you about truly useful new AI tools when I encounter them. Just click the link in the video description to sign up and I'll see you in the next video.